Hi and welcome to another um, HTML Canvas tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at how to fill shapes on the canvas with uh, gradients and with patterns. And we'll look at two different types of gradients. We'll look at a linear gradient and we'll also look at a radial gradient. And um, a pattern that we'll look at creating is a pattern using an image um, that repeats. Okay, so first thing that we need to do to set this up is to create a canvas in the body section. So we'll use the canvas tag and give the canvas an ID, which I'll call my canvas. And we'll also specify the width and the height of this canvas. So the width will be 500. The height will also be, um, actually we'll make it a bit smaller, make that 400. And then we'll add a style for this uh, canvas. So in the head section of our web page, we can add the opening and closing script tags and we'll refer to the canvas by its ID. Sorry, we'll use the style tags first. So style and we'll add a style for this canvas by um, using its ID and um, we'll just add a border, one pixel, solid and black. Okay, so we've got the canvas in the body section with an ID of my canvas. And then in the style tags in the head section, we have, um, we refer to that canvas ID using the ID selector. And then we um, specify a border, which is one pixel, solid and black. All right, now also in the head section, we can add the opening and closing script tags now. And inside the script tags, we will create a um, function. Okay, and this function will be called draw. And inside the function, we'll set it up on the first line uh, so that we have all the different properties available on the canvas. So we'll say var ctx equals, and we'll use the get document.get element by ID method. And we will uh, use that method to get the canvas my canvas refer to its ID and then add dot get context 2d okay so we can end that line there with a semicolon then we will specify the fill style of um, the shape that we're making which will be a rectangle and um, the fill style will be a gradient so we'll say fill style equals gradient Okay, but we haven't actually created that gradient yet. So um, we'll be making a variable that will contain the um, gradient properties, but we'll just comment that out because we haven't actually created that yet. So we'll specify the stroke style first. And we'll just make that blue. And then we'll say ctx fill rect and in brackets we'll say the x and y positions um, that it will start at and the x and y positions that the rectangle will end at so the top left corner and the bottom right hand corner so the rectangle starts at x and y position of zero and then ends at an x and y position of 150 and 75. okay um then we'll say um ctx dot stroke rect zero comma zero and 150 comma 75. So um, the fill and the stroke should be in the same place in the same size. Okay, now we can also outside of this function because we've got a function that contains all this code, we actually need to call this function when the page loads. So we'll add a window.onload event which is equal to draw. So basically this draw function will run when the page loads. All right, we can save that. We'll open that in the browser. All right, now there we go. We have a uh, rectangle up here in the top left corner, starts at X position zero and Y position zero, and ends at an X position of 150 and Y position of 75. All right, now we've filled that but we haven't specified the fill yet, so by default it's just black. However, we have um, specified a stroke style, which is blue. Um, but because it's just a very thin stroke, we haven't specified the 
stroke width. Um, you can barely see it, but I can just see a blue line there. Okay, so we can go back to the code. Now we have this line here, ctx.fillstyle equals gradient, but we actually have to declare that gradient variable first and set up the gradient. So we'll say var gradient equals ctx.create linear gradient. Okay, now a linear gradient is where you have uh, colors changing gradually um, and it's it's kind of moving in sort of like a wave. So the colors change from left to right or from top to bottom um, or um, you know can be diagonally or, but it's um, sort of like in a wave. So that's a linear gradient and we'll have a look at an example of that in a sec once we create it. But I'll just add a comment here with um, what actually goes inside the brackets, the parameters. And basically they're the x1 position, y1 position, x2 position, and y2 position. Okay, so we're going to specify an x1 position of zero and a y1 position of zero, and then an x2 position of 150. Uh, so that's the right hand side of the box and a y2 position of zero. So basically the gradient will be moving from left to right. So the colors will be changing from left to right. And the colors that we specify, um, we do that by adding color stops. So we say gradient dot color, oh, gradient dot add color stop. Okay. And then we'll add the first color stop, which is at zero. And that color will be red. All right, so that's the first color stop. In other words, the color starting from the left. All right, then we'll add another color stop. So the color stops are going to be between zero and one. So zero being left and, right be, and one being right. Okay, so we'll add another color stop. This one will be one and it will be green. Okay. We can now also comment out this line where it says ctx.fillstyle equals gradient because now that gradient variable exists and we've set up all the properties there for the gradient. And um, so basically this rectangle is going to have a linear gradient. So color will start from the left being red and it will gradually turn into green on the right side. Ah, oh, okay, there's a little typo there. Add color stop. So just fix up that um, code there where there was a typo. It should be dot add color stop. So we'll save that, refresh, and there we go. So the color on the left is red and the color on the right is green. So it's a linear gradient moving from left to right and it gradually um, changes from red to green. Okay, if we want to add another color stop in the middle, then we can um, enter, make another line here, and we can say gradient dot add color stop. And we can, uh, if we want it to be exactly in the middle, then we can say 0 0.5, saying that's halfway between zero and one. And we can add another color. So this time we might add yellow. Okay, and we can save, refresh, and now we have red, yellow, and green as a linear gradient. If we wanted to um, change the gradient so it was moving from top to bottom, then we need to change the X and Y positions here. So we would basically um, change it so that it in, uh, because the rectangle is, um, it's basically 150 wide and 70 high. So we would change it so that the uh, X position, X1 position and Y1 position are both zero, and the uh, X2 position is zero, and the Y2 position would be 75. So we'll save and refresh that. And now we have exactly the same linear gradient, but instead of moving from left to right, it's moving from top to bottom. Okay, but I'll, I'll undo that and just leave it how it was before. All right, so we have one gradient there now, 
um, just a linear gradient. What we can do now is create a um, another rectangle and this one will have a um, radial gradient. So a radial gradient is where the color gradually changes but it starts from the middle of a circle and kind of moves out in a circle um, changing color. So here we'll create um, well, we'll create a new rectangle. So we'll start with the stroke style. So I'll say ctx dot stroke style equals uh, blue for this one. And ctx dot fill rect. Uh, and this rectangle will start at an x position of 250, a y position of zero, um, and it will finish at an X position of 200 and a Y position of 200. So it'll be on the right hand side of the first um, rectangle that we made. Okay, and that was the semicolon. And um, the next thing we'll say is CTX dot stroke rect, which should be exactly the same as what's above. So 250, 0, 200, 200. Okay, so we've got the fill and we've got the stroke. Save that. Refresh. All right, there we go. So it's more of a, it's a square really than not a rectangle, but um, we have that there and it's just, it's actually, you can see the gradient is kind of just continuing on. So this is just green at the moment. So we want to add um, a gradient for this rectangle and we want to make a linear gradient. So we will say var and we'll make a new gradient called gradient 2 so var gradient 2 equals ctx dot uh, create radial gradient this time and this one uh, this is a little bit different so the um, parameters here might have to put this on a new line but the parameters are x1 position y1 position Radius one, uh, let's change that there. So radius one, and then x two position, y two position, and radius two. Okay, so that's what's going inside these brackets. So we'll set the x one position as three fifty, the uh, y one position as one hundred, the uh, radius one is zero the uh, x2 position of 350, y2 position of 100, and radius 2 of 200. So this color is going to work from the inside and move out, um, out of the um, square. Okay, so we've got that information there. Now we need to add some color stops. So we can say gradient 2 dot add color stop. So remember to refer to the new um, radial gradient called gradient two. And the color stop here will start with zero and it's going to be yellow. And we'll add another gradient um, color stop. So gradient two dot add color stop equals one. And this one will be uh, blue. All right, now we need to specify the fill style as being this gradient. So we'll say uh, ctx dot fill style equals gradient two. So we'll use this new radial gradient. Okay, so for some reason I put an equals sign there. So we don't actually need equal signs there for the color stops. Don't know why I did that. So save and refresh. And there we go, we have the radial gradient now. Um, so it starts in the middle at zero, and then as yellow, and then moves out to um, gradually change into blue color. All right, so we have the um, linear gradient, and then we have the radial gradient. What we can do now is add a pattern. So we need to firstly, I might do this at the top of the script tag, is um, use an image for our gradient. Now I have an image here. It's actually a really low quality image. It's meant to be a little paint splash, but um, it's a very tiny file, um, very tiny little um, image. So 
I'm going to use that anyway. Um, so I need to say var pattern. So making a new variable called pattern image. So var pattern image equals new image bracket bracket semicolon. And then I'll say pattern image dot source or dot src equals and in quotation marks pattern dot uh, png. So that's the that's the file name of this image, pattern.png. All right. So there's a new variable called pattern image, and um, it's actually an image called pattern.png. All right, we'll go back down to the bottom of this function, and we'll add um, a new variable called pattern, which is equal to ctx.create uh, pattern. And then in brackets, we'll say pattern image so that the first um, parameter there, or first argument is pattern image so we're grabbing that image that we just um, defined up here and then we'll add um, we'll make that this pattern repeat so we'll add repeat there in quotation marks you could also change it to like repeat left uh, sorry repeat um, right or you could um, make it so that there's no repeat um, but we'll make it so this image repeat, repeats to fill up the whole shape. All right, we'll create the um, shape in a sec, but we'll just change the fill style to um, equal pattern. So it's using that pattern variable here. So ctx fill style equals pattern, ctx dot stroke style. And just to make things different, we might actually use this linear gradient that we made earlier as the stroke style, just to show that you can actually use a gradient for a stroke as well. So ctx.stroke style equals gradient. ctx.line width will change to 20 just so that we can actually see that gradient on the stroke or on the line. And then we'll say ctx.fill rect. So we'll create a new rectangle and it will start an X position of 20, Y position of 150. Um, and it will end at an X position 200 and a Y position of 200. Then we'll just say CTX dot stroke rect, and it's going to be exactly the same as above. So 20, 150, 200, and 200. So the stroke will be around that filled rectangle. All right, that's all we need to do. We'll save that and refresh. And there we go. So we have this um, new rectangle or square, and it's using the uh, linear gradient from up here. It's using that linear gradient for uh, the uh, line or stroke around the um, square. And then it's using that image, which is being repeated across that square. It's using that image as a pattern to fill. So have a look here at the... Uh, the linear gradient, so see in this rectangle up here, it starts as red, moves to yellow, and then green. Well, it's the same here, so that gradient is in, is in exactly the same position, but it's just being applied um, to this square down here. So you can see that the, the yellow is in exactly the same position, even though this square here is, in, is down further on the canvas and it's moved a little bit to the right and it's a bit bigger you can see that the gradient is in exactly the same position on the canvas. So the yellow is exactly here and the green moves further out and gets darker there as well. So that is basically how to create a linear gradient, a radial gradient and a pattern to fill shapes and also um, for stroke styles. Thanks for watching.